Hello and welcome everyone to anubhavtrainings.com with Anubhav Learning Series. In this video, we will discuss about practical usage of promises in SAP UI5. In my last couple of videos, we discussed about concept of JavaScript, non-blocking I.O. and asynchronous programming. And in the last video, we saw what is a promise, how to define it and how to use it. If you have not seen both these videos, I would recommend you to please go back and check the description of the video so that you can find the links of previous videos. You can also click on the I button on the top to be able to navigate right away to those videos. And then you can come back to this video and look at the usage of promise concept in UI5. So let's get started. So what I have today is a practical example for promise. So many a times, as you all work with real-time UI5 application, we've also done that in our training examples, that suppose I have so many controllers. So my application is filled with multiple controllers. Let's say I have controller one, and I have controller two. In the first controller, we have a method which is making a call to an O data service. It's a get call. Now it's making a call, of course, to our SAP server where all the ERP data is. This could be an S4 or it could be ECC. Now at the same time, I have a controller two and this controller two is also making a call to the server, reading the data, which is a get call. Typically, how do you write such calls? So you will use OData model dot read, which is a method of OData V2 model. You will pass the path of the entity and then you will have the handling for success and error callbacks, correct? This is what we also learned in our training, and this is all we all typically do. Did you ever thought that can we modularize this piece of code? As in, today when you look at your code, this piece of code is written at point one, and also the same piece of code is written at point two, both the places it is written. Yes, right? Now, tomorrow if there is a change, for example, I have to pass filter, I have to come back to both the places and add the filters, right? And maybe after 10 or 15 days, you have a requirement to also pass parameters to all the OData calls. For example, if you are using a non-SAP backend, so you have to pass authorization parameter. Would you go and make changes to all those places where there is a read call me to pass parameters? Right? Am I making sense that every time if there is a change in the read call, we have to go back and adopt all our code everywhere? How can we solve this? Sometimes you may also see that I make a read call and in response, once the data comes back, I need to make another read call. And that code you will write inside the success call back. And then another read call and another call back. So this will lead to piles of callbacks, one on top. We call this in programming terms a callback hell. So two problem statements, both of these can be solved with the help of promise. What I'm going to do now is I will be writing a new separate JavaScript file. We can name it as, let's say, O data helper. And this OData helper is going to return a promise, which is what will actually call this OData read. So this piece of code, which you're writing again and again, you move it inside your helper. Now it's the helper which is going to make a call to the actual backend service. This is what is going to happen. And then, we actually no more make a call 
from the individual controllers. Rather, these individual controllers now will stick and call to the promise. Still, once the response comes back in your controller, you would like to do some post-processing on success and error. You'll still be able to do that because promise allows you to write the positive and negative response using then and catch. If you don't remember that, I would recall you to the previous session where we discussed this example of Alex who promised his mom to go for a cleaning of a room. If he cleans the room, it's a positive response. Then he go for football. If it's a negative response, go for cleaning the laundry, right? So that's what we exactly saw in our previous example for the basic concept. So you still can reuse the response callbacks, but all the calls will go via promise. And promise is going to make a call to OData, which is also asynchronous. And once the response comes back, promise is going to resolve or reject. And based on that, your OData will be called. Fantastic. Let's go to the system. And I'm going to reuse an OData project, or sorry, a UI5 project, which we built during our, our UI5 training. And I'm going to simplify that. So switch it over to Web IDE. And you can see I have a V1 controller. It's the same controller which is having two times the read call. One is here, which is on, on product request. And there's one more call called own most expensive request. It's also a read call. So you can see this is a read call. And this is a read call. I have two read calls. You can also have so many read calls probably in some other controllers, for example, on add controller or on view to controller. Now, how do you modularize all of them? We can go back and now write a reusable module with the help of promise. I will go back to model folder. And maybe you just create a new JavaScript file. We can call it as odata helper.js. And inside this odata helper.js, we always start our UI5 project with scaffolding template. I hope you remember our training stuff where we discussed about what is scaffolding. Those who are absolutely new to UI5, you can attend my training on UI5 and Fury Foundation course where you can understand these core concepts of UI5 with scaffolding. So I'm creating a reusable JS. Fantastic. So there's nothing new in this. You all know this piece of code with our training. Now over here, we're going to return or create a new method, call get methods or call get odata. It's a function. This function will receive model object and also the path which it needs to call. And what this function returns is a promise. And you have resolver and reject. Awesome. Now I'm going to move out all the code from our main code. Just take it out. Move it inside here. And of course, now you have this O model over here with the S path being read. And once the data is received, you can say resolve with the data. It's a positive response. To the executor of the promise. And then if it is an error, of course, is a negative response reject with an error object. Wow, amazing. Wow, super. And time that we use this OData helper, you can use it anywhere. Tomorrow, if there is a change, you need to add, add extra bit of st stuff. You can always add filters. You can add um, parameters expand all the stuff which you really needed you can centrally control them in this promise for complete reusability this is what we call a good design a clean design the most of the things will be reusable 
and guess what this is our executor we're going to execute it from the outside now so we go back to the view and controller we will say bye bye to this code bye bye and now over here what we're going to do is just go back on the top add the dependency of my OData helper with the namespace of my project so whatever is the project namespace pin ap and then i have a folder called model and that's the folder we have for data it's case sensitive so be very careful line by line no copy paste of code guys i hope you remember the slogan of my trainings no copy paste that's how we learn things without any copy paste of code awesome we got this helper object and i can straight ahead go down where we were making this read call i'm just going to use helper and call my promise executor call odata pass the arguments it needs it needs the odata model object and it also needs the path and finally you have the callbacks then else you can have then and you have of course the case in case of negative response then you have the catch fantastic now this piece of function which you were earlier using in odata you can still do that as part of then yeah so the same thing we can use over here of course you can also write that data and whatever code you were having earlier of setting some data set or model or whatever just still can have that but now you have better reusability better control on the code same time we have the function with error object which you receive from the promise back in case of a negative response you can throw the error message awesome so that's it we are what are we waiting for we can straight ahead go back and test this you can also set up a debugger inside your odata helper For example over here to just see if my odata helper is getting called please note this is a violation of best practice that's why webid gives you an error here still you can run the code before you ship it you remove this piece of code okay let's come back reload I can press F12 and we can go to launch and we will enter here a product ID for example HD1000 and be ready I press enter key there's a problem you can see undefined is not a promise so I think we've done some mistake let's go back and correct the same go back to the code So what I just missed in the ODA helper is to just the new keyword. Exactly. Small letter. JavaScript is case sensitive. Fundafox, right? Awesome. We just do that. Save it. Let's come back to the Fury app. Reload. And now it's time that we go back and check this. Launch. Press F12 because I wanted to also make sure that it goes into my promise. And I will come back and enter a product ID 1010 press enter voila you can see it's calling my promise debugger is triggered that one is now going to make a call to my odata model centrally and as a result it's going to resolve and reject of course it's going to resolve because it's going to find that and also it's going to of course call over my controller so let me also set up a breakpoint at design time sorry at runtime into my controller code so you can just go back here where am I calling this OData helper? Yes, we can just set up in the positive and negative callbacks. Let's test it. So we can say F8. It makes a call to OData service. It gets the data from the OData service. You can see the network tab. The call was made by promise. And the promise promises you back that I'm going to give you respond back. For positive response it's going to call resolver with the data is being sent i press f8 and it hits my success callback in the then positive use case 
Here it's setting the data back to the UI model and set the value state to none. I can just uncomment and just simply say F8. And voila, you can see all the data on our UI. I go back and enter an incorrect product, for example, junk. And you can see we also get our error message back because my promise rejects this with error message and then it's going to call the catch call back. So the same code now can be used, for example, just 10, 10, and I can go back to the above one and here also I can replace the code. So let me go back and the same promise, I can copy this and just come down. We were also making a read call manually here, replace it with the promise. That's it. Same code, no change. Comment out this. So now I can see I have a completely reusable method get call. You can also build a completely new OData API which can perform centrally all the get, put, post, delete, lock, unlock, all kinds of calls. It's completely possible. You can always do that. And that way you can have centralized control. If tomorrow there is an extra bit of parameter or extra stuff which you really need to pass to the system, you will always be able to do that. So I hope now it's clear how to practically use the concept of promise and avoid the callback hells when it comes to SAP UI5. With that, Thank you so much for watching. For more interesting videos like this, feel free to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon. For detailed training on UI5 theory, ABAP on HANA, CDS views, AMDP, Analytics Cloud, HANA Access, Access Advance, ABAP, Oops ABAP, Design Patterns, feel free to subscribe our courses on unabouttrainings.com. Thank you so much for watching once again, and I'll see you in the next video.